Hi everyone, it's me, Persephone Astrology. Welcome to my channel. Come in, come in. Okay, so today I'm going to be doing a reading on Harry and Meghan having just binged their Netflix documentary, which I enjoyed. I thought it was good. Um, it wasn't anything that was really news to me. But, um, you know, I think it probably did give an insight to a lot of people who have maybe not considered the workings of the media. So the first thing I do have to say, I don't tear down other people. I don't need to tear down other people. I'm not the media. Um, and I just don't push, like, villainous caricatures onto anyone because I, I do believe that people are multifaceted um, and everything is an opportunity to understand people better and have empathy for people and I do believe in the good in people right so this is going to be a very um, holistic um, fair reading I have drawn lots of tarot cards here it's going to be very comprehensive I have both of their astrology bath charts up here which I'll be taking a look at um so going into the bath charts first of all right this is this is funny so back when they were um getting married I done three readings on my channel that I released that were uh Megan's very brief birth chart, Harry's uh, very brief version of his birth chart, and then a very brief sinistry compatibility reading for the two of them. And so many of the things I said were like very apparent in this documentary. So I will link these um, readings in the cards above if you'd like to watch them. But if not, what I'm going to do now is I will recap on the main points that I said, um, and then I'll do an overview of their birth chart of their birth chart from my perspective now. Okay, so um, these are the points that I have written down from just watching my own videos that I said she brings him out of his shell. Okay, in any way that he has been restricted, um, she will expand his world. Um, due to her being a Leo sun and him being a Virgo sun. Um, she brings adventure and excitement into her life, okay? Her sun is square his Saturn, okay? So actually being with him physically um, restricts her, okay? So she can't do what she wants to do. Okay, um, and I said I said this two years ago, right before, um, you know, they had made the break from the royal family, um, and before she had revealed all of this stuff. So Jupiter square moon. So she um, would like to have something more intimate. Okay, more home focused, more close, um, rather than being out in the world, okay, so he, um, being with him brings her into, uh, an expanded version of her world, okay, so there's a lot of learning that they do just by being together, okay, they have a lot of Saturn aspects, and Saturn is the great teacher, so, uh, just as an example, Venus sextile Saturn, okay, so he brings maturity to the relationship, which she respects and enjoys, um, and, they can get through hard times together as a unit, okay? And they can still find time to enjoy themselves through the hardships that they may go through, all right? Uh, this is what I said about Harry. I said he's a very private person. He has a lot of eighth house energy. Eighth house is the house of transformation. So when you have a lot of eighth house placements in your birth chart, you can overcome a lot in your life, be it through many different crises, unusual circumstances. You're going to have to make a lot of changes to outgrow the toxic situations that you find yourself in. 
Okay, so also said that he may not be built for the being in the royal family <laughs> um, because it's too much for his character because he is a very private person and he is a very genuine person. Okay, he's not a naturally public facing person. He does not want to be on display 24 seven. He is not a zoo animal. Okay, he is authentic and genuine. He's a Virgo, Sun, and Mercury, and a Moon in Taurus. So he's very, very, very earthy. He wants to live a life where he's in touch with nature. Um, and the the main key word that I would say for Harry's personality is authenticity. Okay, the best character trait that Virgos have is that they are very authentic. They are not comfortable pretending to be someone that they're not. And they're also highly intelligent. Um, he's, he's Mercury is in Virgo as well, okay? So with his Mercury being in Virgo, this is the most intelligent uh, placement you can have, okay? Speaking from someone that has it. <laughs> um, yeah, this is the most... <laughs> he's very analytical, okay? He's very much quick-witted. He is a quick thinker. He's very well-read and well-researched. Um, he's very, very, very authentic in his um, views and ideolo ideologies. Um, and he knows his stuff. He really knows his stuff. And if he doesn't know too much about subjects, he's not going to pretend he does because he's always going to approach with authenticity and a genuine curiosity to always keep learning um it's almost an obsession for learning okay that virgo mercury have because um when they're not learning new things they 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 just can't they just can't cope with that they always have to be um learning new things all the time it's almost like an obsession um, so he's very reserved. This is what this is going back to what I said in my previous reading. Now I said he's reserved. I said he's self sufficient. I said he is very drawn to the forbidden. Okay, because he does have a lot of eighth house energy. Um, I said trust is very important for him. I also said that his um, his wife and possible children will always be able to rely on him. He is that stability okay he is centered and he's reliable and also said that he has a guardian angel present in his life because he has jupiter in the 12th house um you know his mother it seems to be a very strong presence in his life still he was mentioning her a lot okay and he still seems to have that emotional bond with his mother what i have said about megan previously is that she's always going to showcase her intelligence, um, but she can be very nervous in public, okay? Also said she is naturally of service to the people. Um, she's genuinely interested in charitable causes. Um, and expressing herself verbally is something that she has had to learn with age okay because she has saturn in the third house okay she actually has a lot of third house energy as well she's got moon venus jupiter saturn all in the third house and my gosh these people they do not know when to keep their mouth shut okay they're 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 speaking their mind they can't help it they can't help but speak their mind because they love a chat um and it's very, very, very hard for them to keep anything in, okay? So a lot of the times you see in the documentary where she has got herself into trouble has been when she's simply just expressing and vocalising her feelings. That seems to be what re what's really gotten her in trouble is not having that natural ability to be private, okay? She loves to speak her mind. And bear in mind, right, I know a lot of people don't like her because they think she's, like, um, self-centred or she's, um, I don't know, like, very self-confident. Insecure people find self-confident people to be very... Uh, it gives them a sense of unease, right? 
number one. Number two, she's a Leo, okay? Not only is she a Leo, right, with two Leo placements, she's also got one, two, okay, yeah, just two. Um, she's got two Leo placements and two fifth house placements, which is the house that rules Leo. So she is quite Leo um, in character. So she's quite a typical Leo, right? And it can be difficult for Leo or fire dominated women to be received and perceived by the media and by the public because of the way that we're brought up in which we're taught to be supporting characters rather than embodying that main character energy. Um, as in, like, when children are brought up, um, girls are often told that they're bossy, whereas when boys exhibit bossy characteristics, they are confident, they are an entrepreneur, like, it's not something which would be used to try and minimise them, right? So when women embody this sense of confidence, it does bring about a sense of unease um, in people a lot of the time, which means it's not well received. And if Leo energy really grinds your gears, it is a call for you to work on that part of yourself, which revolves around your self-esteem and taking up space and speaking up for yourself and putting yourself first and what is it about that that makes you uncomfortable? Because what we have to remember is that the racism and the sexism that, that Megan is referring to is not about someone jumping in your face and calling you the N-word or the B-word. It's like, I mean, I'm not saying that doesn't happen because I'm sure that that does happen but in Megan's case right it's a lot about the subtle nuances to our culture which are ingrained in our behaviors that go undercover because um, you would have to be stupid to jump out at people um, and you know overtly call them racist names Sophisticated racism um, by intelligent people actually occurs very much under the surface where there's certain expectations in place for different sexes, there's certain pressures in place for different sexes, um, and there's certain and desired traits in place for different sexes which are displayed through subtle hints that permeate the culture, that we, even as women, are also trained from a young age to collaborate in. And it's much more effective and, and sophisticated when things are implied by symbols and language and passive aggression. Because people who don't naturally have an abstract perspective would never notice it. Okay, so it's like gaslighting on a global scale. <laughs> and let me just tell you th this now, okay? The, the things that people are finding annoying about her, that, that's just her being a Leo. She doesn't mean any harm, okay? That's just what she's like. Um, you can't expect a typical Leo character to be silent or quiet. That's insane, okay? Everyone knows that Leo's allowed. Um, and it doesn't mean that they're a bad person okay um that's just the way that they are you have to accept people <laughs> you have to accept people for the way that they are um so yeah she's a leo and um leos are very royal in their nature okay um leos are very outgoing very confident and let me just tell you something about leos now you cannot bully a Leo. Leos will not be bullied. It's not possible to bully a Leo. Have you ever seen a Leo being bullied? Um, and a typical Leo as well with lots of Leo energy. Um, they do put themselves first. They won't be kept quiet about themselves and their perspective. 
It's just not going to happen, right? Um, no matter how much you crush them down, they're still going to have that strength of character to bounce back. Harry's a Virgo, and as I said, the number one Virgo trait is their authenticity. Also, they're not easily manipulated because they're very smart. He's Mercury and his son is in Virgo. So he is super, 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 super intelligent. He's not going to be manipulated in any way, shape or form. And it says a lot about him that he was indoctrinated into a system, right, with systemic racism, with systemic sexism, with systemic classism. And he was able to move his mind forward and pioneer through that, through being brought up in a very, very, very traditional system. I mean, what a smart guy, really. Um, and the thing about him is what he shows is that there are genuine men out there, okay? And let me tell you something about what being a princess is, okay? What being rural is, what being a duchess is. Um, it's not about wearing diamonds and wearing jewels and wearing a crown and being photographed by paparazzi, okay? What being a princess really is, is that feeling when um, you have a real man in your life who puts you first, who honours you, who takes care of you and who knows how to treat you. And that's what's happening there. She, she's got to be a princess but not in the way that anyone expected, okay? And she's probably much better off than some of the other women in her, their family who have to sacrifice their own um, feel, feelings and freedom in order to be labelled as a duchess or a princess or a queen or whatever. You know, she really does have that status of um, being in that divine feminine essence, where your man knows how to look after you, okay, um, and that's really giving off a royal energy at its core, okay, not how it's been muddied throughout the years, um, also, she's got Mars in the 12th house, Megan, right, so she, this indicates hidden enemies, okay, Mars is very combative, very violent, and the 12th house is everything that is hidden, that is private, that is happening undercover. So there is um, a sense of perhaps, yeah, being bullied in, in secret, right? And um, feeling under threat, but you can't really explain why, okay? This is going to be a theme in her life that she's going to have to overcome. And a lot of people who have this placement overcome it by doing intense sports, competitive sports, yoga, tai chi, anything which calms the body, calms the mind, calms the spirit, that would be good for her, um, but yeah, she will have a little, there's this little bit of a sense of paranoia, you know, someone's out to get you, or um, there is something under the current, under the surface, that, that you're not, you're not quite sure what's going on, but you know someone's out to get you, and that's not a nice feeling to have, um, also, the, th the main thing I notice about their birth charts is that they have got the ascendant opposite to the seventh house of relationships in their houses, okay? This is my number one favourite indicator of relationships, passion, romance, all of that. Because they do have opposites within themselves, um, that are reflected towards each other, which makes them a strong couple. Uh, Megan's ascendant is in Cancer. Princess Diana, Harry's mum, is a Cancer, okay? So there's going to be... And his seventh house of relationships is in Cancer, right? So when he looks at Megan, what he interprets, what he perceives, and what he sees in her are those very same traits that remind him of his mother and this is one of the reasons why he's really attracted to her okay um his ascendance in capricorn and her zone of relationships is in capricorn so her view of him is that he is the stable um masculine strong man that's going to be able to support her 
honour her, um, provide for her and take care of her. Okay. Um, a lot of what Harry said um, also was um, very feminist in nature. Okay. So Harry is a very, very, very strong man. He's divine masculine. He's a protector. Um, and he always seems to encourage Megan's independence. Okay. When you're with the Leo, you have to know that um, you have to really support um, and encourage that Leo to have their own independence. They're always going to be ambitious. They're always going to want to have their own life. They're always going to want to have their own businesses. They're always going to want to be a leader in some way, shape or form. So you can't be in a relationship with a Leo and restrict their freedom in any way. So that life of just following him around doing social engagements... Um, you know, it was well suited to her in a way, but she also has to be has to have her own choices in life because um, Leos um, are very bold and they have their own sense of self and their own sense of ambition. Okay. Also. Um, a lot of the poignant moments that Megan seems to have in this documentary are all revolved around her receiving validation from someone, okay, like a random person noticing her and validating her experience and her feelings because she had felt so invalidated in that whole situation. Um, this is a very Leo trait okay leos want you to reflect back to them an affirmation of themselves okay another thing about leos is they're not gonna go unsung they're not gonna go unappreciated they're gonna go where they're wanted they're not gonna hang around and stay around where they are unappreciated ever because that's a waste of their time they've got better things to do okay and, I mean, she could have been a massive asset to the royal family. She actually enjoys charity work. She was doing it already before <laughs> before she even had to. Um, she's a woman of colour in a very old-fashioned institution that really did need that representation. Being as, you know, they have all of these Commonwealth countries that, you know, they could have really had someone to relate to that would have made them support the royal family a hell of a lot more um so she could have been an asset um but where she, when the leo sees that they're not being appreciated there's no way that they're going to serve unappreciated okay because they know their worth by nature um and i mean yeah i get why people like find her annoying but i mean there, there could be a hint of jealousy there there could be a hint of um, territorial energy there around, you know, their identity being linked to being British and the royal family and all of that. But, I mean, there was less hate for the paedophile of the royal family than there has been for this woman who's clearly not a paedophile, right? So let's um, get into the tarot portion of this reading. So I've pulled a few cards here. Okay, so first of all, I have the Ace of Swords. So this is everything up until this point, okay? This is um, Harry and Meghan needing to really... They needed to tell their side of the story, okay? They could not do it. They had to take power in speaking their truth. The Ace of Swords is all about taking power in being able to speak your truth and express yourself even if it's harsh and the funniest thing about this card is that on top of the sword we have a crown we have a crown on top of the sword okay um so harry speaking his truth in this weird way um kind of adds to his sense of royalty okay because it shows that he's a brave, courageous man and he's able to stand up for himself, okay? Which is a trait of um, the most respected kings from back in the day, okay? You have to remember that this, this lineage goes on since very, very early 
um, medieval times, okay? I have the Hierophant here in the present and it's being crossed by the Three of Wands. So here we have the two opportunity or the two um, routes that these two were presented with, okay? The Hierophant is the system. The Hierophant is the royal family, the systems that are put in place to restrict them and make them believe in a certain way of thinking. The Three of Wands is them spending a lot of time actually plotting and planning how they were going to create their freedom. And there's a sea here with boats on it. They had to go overseas to a whole other country to even be able to find the space to have their freedom as a family, okay? So they are finally um, realizing and enjoying um, their dream and their vision, which they have been building for a long time, which is to go overseas somewhere. Now, the Hierophant being in the um, the present position, right, there's still a lot of energy around this system and the claws that it has in these two. They haven't completely freed themselves of it yet. Um, and I just want to say that this system, okay, this system that I'm talking about, this goes a lot deeper psychologically than people may think, okay? People think of the royal family as, you know, something to be proud of. Um, but really, I mean, if you look back, okay, I'm really into medieval history and I read a lot about the kings and queens of yesteryear. So if you, like, go trace it right back, okay, since medieval times in the monarchy and high society... They wouldn't take care of their own children, okay? The protocol would be it's really, really pressured upon the woman to produce an heir, right? And once you produce that heir, the man doesn't really have anything to do with it, okay? And the woman, once you produce that heir, you give them away to a wet nurse. The wet nurse breastfeeds the baby. They're taken away to a manor house out in the countryside to be educated formally away from the family, okay? So the, the young princes and princesses, the priority is for them to have the best education and be part of their own household while the mum and dad would live at court and serve the people so that they didn't have to deal with the burdens of parenting when they were really busy, um, you know, um, running the country. So the protocol would be, um, you know, this system is created where they, they're, they're living in a household away from court, okay? Um, there's an absence of that nurturance, support, and physical and emotional contact with the mother from an early age. And what this does, what this creates, um, when someone has an inconsistent um, mother figure, okay, they may have had nannies that come and go, nurses that come and go, tutors that come and go, so it's not like that they don't feel that sense of consistency from being bonded to the mother, so um, what this does is it creates an insecure or avoidant attachment style, so all throughout the years, right, there's this system of people who are running the country, okay, in high society, in monarchy, people in positions of power who do not want to be burdened by parenting because they're busy, um, you know, running the empire or whatever, okay? What this creates is a loop where interaction with the parents are very infrequent, okay? So the child learns that they cannot depend on their mother, and their father, okay, they, they, they have to turn off their attachment needs in order to cope with this, in order to survive, okay, so, I mean, what this does is that it creates a cycle, it creates a cycle that continues over time, okay, where, 
um, you you as a child you you have to hide your needs you have to um, invalidate your own needs within yourself because they're not going to get met by your mum or by your dad because they're too busy they're off running the country you don't you only see them once or twice a year or whatever if that so um that that's that's the the system that's been going on for centuries and centuries and centuries and centuries. Keep that in mind first of all. And when you're born into a family like this, this is totally normal for you. Okay, you're meant you're public facing. You're meant to serve the country. This is the structure. This is the system. You do not question it. You follow it. Your emotional needs are second to um, your public facing image. Okay, that's number one. So you're a sacrifice of sorts. And this is a lot about what, what you guys don't understand about even what being a celebrity is about, okay? It's about sacrificing your own personal freedom, okay? Um, so to enter into a situation like this, right? I mean, she was al already an actress. She was already famous, but she's an American, okay? To start, American people are brought up to express their feelings way more than English people. Even normal English people who are not indoctrined into this um, kind of uh, system where it's natural to invalidate your own feelings, right? Polite English culture is about getting on with it. It's not about expressing your needs, okay? That's expressing your needs is not something that's, you know, out there, okay, we're a bit more polite, we're a bit more shy, we're a bit more reserved, okay, so to enter a situation like that, okay, where there's generations of avoidant attachment in the family, everyone's going to seem cold, and they don't know they're being cold, because they, that's their defense mechanism, okay, they don't know they're being cold, but to, to someone who's not grown up in that, She's going to be, like, feeling very alienated. No one wants to hear my point of view. No one wants to hear my feelings. What's going on? Everyone's cold. Okay? Um, it can seem very invalidating. Okay? It's, it's a culture shock. You're not used to it. Um, so she's, she's dealing with that as well. And this is what I want to really, really, really highlight is um, when they talk about the... Is it the firm they refer it to as? Or the... I can't remember what they refer it to as, but they do, they have a word instead of saying like, um, when they refer to their family, they refer to it as, we'll put it in the comments, um, they say it all the time, I can't remember what it is, um, but yeah, that, that structure, it, it runs deep on so many psychological levels as well as just being their jobs. Okay, and bear in mind, right, I know that people really identify with the royal family, and we have judgment here above in the conscious mind, we have judgment, they're feeling the pressure of the judgment from people all around, okay, um, and I know that people identify with the royal family, but what you're seeing is a very curated snapshot of who they are, okay, that the management want you to see, that the media want you to see, and you, you don't really know this person, <laughs> and, um, you know, you don't really have a right as a member of the public, even though you pay taxes and that finances the royal family, um, you don't really have a right to control what job a person does, okay, especially if they're willing to make their own uh, living and, and, and not live off taxpayers' money. Um, the, the public have no right to control what job a person has, what job a person that you've never met has. Imagine going in to a life full of judgment, okay? This judgment card is above in the conscious mind, this is Harry. Um, imagine being born into a life where you couldn't choose your path, your job, and you just had to, you were just expected to do this this one particular job, and if you didn't like it, tough, I mean, would you stick around, like, pff, come on, and I see that throughout his life, he's made many, many attempts to rebel, and, um, I don't know, I just think, good on him, he's got a sense of individuality, you can't condemn him for that, 
Um, so he's a human being, okay? He's not public property, right? And we have the King of Wands here um, in the upcoming position, right? This is this is this is Harry. He's the King of Wands, okay? He has passion. He has fortitude. He has strength. He's a divine masculine. Um, he's a very strong man. He's um, very gentle. He's creative. He's giving. Um, and I mean, I can't give him enough compliments, can I? Um, <laughs> I've got, um, advice here being the queen of swords. And this does surprise me because I was thinking that it's a bit dangerous in my view of things for the, for them to keep sharing things, even though they're obviously not sharing the whole story. They're being very tactful, um, clearly, but I can see this as Megan. Megan is the queen of swords because the queen of swords is um, she can be untactful, okay, but she tells the truth, you know, those people that are like, I'm honest, I'm honest, you know, you may not like it, love me or hate me, I'm honest, she's one of them people, and, um, you do have to respect her for that, and with it being in the advice position, surprisingly, this honesty and, and telling their side of the story, uh, may be actually advisable, okay, rather than just keeping quiet and, um, letting a false narrative be built around you, which you have no part of. Outside influences, okay? I have the Six of Swords here, and the Six of Swords depicts, and there's a theme of swords going on here, and the swords represent battles, okay? So their life is feels like a bit of a battle at the moment. Um... And what the Six of Swords represents is a man rowing a boat with a woman and a child inside. Oh my gosh, this is them. This is their family. Harry had to leave his homeland. Okay, they're on the sea. They're going to another land. He had to go overseas, leave his homeland, steer the ship so that his wife and child could be safe and protected. And he took that role. And he did that to protect his family and get them across the seas to safety. Oh my gosh, wow. Um, in the hopes and fears position, I do have the chariot. So what I can see is, again, this sense of battle. They're kind of perpetuating and creating and, and carrying on this sense of having to fight. They want to fight this injustice, okay? They're not taking it. They're not having it. And this is very much a fire sign card. And I can see a lot of Megan in this. Um, Megan is really showing her fire nature by fighting against, I mean, the most rich, huge, influential you've got to have some guts, right, you've got to have some guts, you've got to be a fire sign, you would not catch anyone who's not a fire sign behaving like this, I mean, she's got guts, okay, and another thing I want to say about Megan, she's got moon in uh, Libra and sun in Leo, now this naturally, for a woman to have the air and fire combo in their sun and moon, the two masculine, okay, um, the two masculine elements, okay, the um, the air and the fire are the two masculine elements, right, and um, water and earth are the feminine. So we, when women have the sun and moon in um, fire and air, they're very, very, very pioneering, very strong. Um, very remarkable, but they're not always perceived that well by the public, especially more traditional, old-fashioned people who want women to be more timid, okay? So a lot of the times, they don't come across very well towards the public. I always like them, okay? I have no problem with it, but some people um, may find these women to be outspoken and aggressive, and that offends them because they they have some sense of insecurity about um, strong women, okay? And to accept a woman like this, you have to be a strong man in your divine masculine, and this is what Harry, um, this is what Harry has about himself, and that's what a lot of people don't understand about them, okay? People who are not in their divine essence, um, 
these two may give them make them feel a little bit insecure okay um so now in the future position i have the six of cups okay another six um and the six of cups is always comes up something to do with grandmothers there's some link, I mean, if the Queen was still alive, I would say that this has some indication of Harry having a public reconciliation with the Queen. Um, so I don't know what this represents in terms of... There's a sense of giving, there's a sense of maternal um, connection. There's going to be um, some sort of connection taking place between Harry and his mother and his grandmother and what is being passed down through the feminine side of the family, okay? We're speaking a lot about what is being passed down through the system and what is being passed down through the generations of the lifestyle that they have had to lead by being in this position of power. But what about what's being handed down through the divine feminine? What about what's being handed down from grandmothers? and mothers okay this is something very very precious something to honor okay when the divine feminine comes up in a reading and it's result um and it's very centered around um giving generosity abundance okay this is how mother nature will always provide okay everything we need is there in mother nature everything we need is there in those connections that we have with the women who nurture us and love us okay so there's some sense of something being passed down i know that he named his daughter her middle name is diana there's something that's being passed down through this family which is a positive thing and which is a gift for this family to find. They're going to find more connection within that family when they think about the positives rather than the negatives. When they think about the sense of kindness, generosity and nurturance that has been passed down, that's where they're going to find their joy. So it's all good for their future, okay? Nothing dramatic um, for their future. I just hope that they keep themselves safe and protected, Okay, um, you know, they need to be safe and protected because it's no joke going against, um, you know, these people like, you know, you know what happened to his mother. Um, so, yeah, they need to be careful and they need to protect themselves. So what, what they're trying to do is actually trying to protect themselves. Um, but I feel that they definitely need to embrace um, more privacy in their life. Now, looking at these archetype cards also that I have, um, I've done a line for Harry, I've done a line for Meghan, and I've done one in between, which represents the relationship between the two of them. Okay, so for Harry here, I have Pioneer, and this is someone, this is what I was saying about his Virgo and his Virgo Mercury, right? He's always looking to learn new things. He's always wanting to do something and create something which has not been done before. He is a pioneer. He's broke out of a very solid system and structure. And that takes a lot of guts. That it takes a lot of courage. He's got a compulsive need to keep moving forward and keep learning new things. He's a gambler as well. I've got gambler. And that is the willingness to follow intuition, even when others doubt you. I mean, wow. Could that be more perfectly explained? Um, he feels like a lucky person. He relies on his, his luck. Um, and he's going to do what he wants to do, okay? And if anyone doubts him, that's on them. He's going to carry on doing what he wants to do. I've also got addict here. Um, and I can see that... Um, he does have patterns here, which, I mean, maybe he does have some, some, some insecure attachment of some sort, because he does have, I can see it very clearly as he's got some kind of compulsion, he's a very passionate person, I feel like he observes rituals, or he observes, um, patterns and routines that's a very virgo thing to do right and a lot of people can interpret this as being obsessive or being addictive in character he he likes to do certain things in certain ways to help him to feel 
at peace and feel secure. And the love that he has to Megan, this is not this is not going to be easily broken, okay? He's going to keep coming back for more because that's something that really feeds his soul. I've also got the night card. So this is all about chivalry loyalty, romance, and a love of honour. And that's everything that I was saying earlier about what being a true princess is, okay? Um, he has, he's her knight, okay? He, he gives her this sense of protection, this sense of safety, this sense of he's loyal and chivalrous and divine masculine and manly. And what a beautiful thing. I and mean, he's a gentleman, he's a gentleman. Um, and he has a lot of honour for his love, and this definitely links to, um, yeah, that image of the real princess, the princess at heart, um, not needing to have the crown and, you know, all of that, because what it really is, is having that chivalrous man in your life to make you feel like a princess, okay? That's the true essence and energy of it. Now, for Megan, um, I've got Don Juan, which spotlights seductive qualities. So, I mean, I don't want to pry. I mean, I'm guessing they have a good sex life. Virgos are kinky. Let's just say that and leave it at that. But, yeah, there's definitely passion there, okay? Um, she's also an advocate. We know that she's been doing charity work um, before she even got involved with the royal family. So, she... It, she's inspired to put her compassion into action, okay, so she feels like it is her duty to help people through this sense of compassion that she has, and that's something that she really enjoys, I've got martyr as well, so leading on from advocate is martyr, um, so it's about uh, serving a cause, okay? She actually genuinely does enjoy serving causes, she's not just doing it for show, um, and this is below the knight card, okay, so I've got the knight card for Harry, I've got the martyr for Meghan below, so this is, this is the way that they are attracted to each other, he brings that chivalry, and he sees that charitable aspect in her, which he finds really attractive, because the lover card is in between, so there's so much passion, there's so much devotion, um, it's almost like unconditional love between the two of them, right, and I feel the very, very strongly that this is linked to him giving her this kind of chivalrous protection and structure that she never had, and her showing uh, him this um, service to cause, this, um, you know, being a martyr, something that he never had, which really reminds him of his mother, okay, and she replaces that absence that he may have felt for his mother in his heart. I also have healer for Megan, um, and this is about, again, a passion to serve other people, okay, um, it's all about mind, body, and spirit, and I spoke earlier about her Mars in the 12th house, and her need to marry the mind with the body and the spirit, so definitely sports, yoga, and exercise is recommended for her to be able to feel more calm, and this can help her, the more she heals herself, the more she can heal others, because the more she'll have to give, now, in between the healer for Megan and the addict for Harry, I have athlete, okay? And this is all about the dedication to transcending limits, being able to develop yourself through your willpower and your pure strength of spirit. So their relationship is very, very strongly protected. I actually feel that his mother approves of this relationship um, from you know, an energetic standpoint, she is watching over him, she is his guardian angel, and I feel like she is very much in support of this relationship, um, and the strength that they have together is spiritually supported, that's for sure. Um... Also, in between gambler and advocate, I have the father card, so I definitely feel like, um, what I was saying about Harry is that he fulfills this sense of, you know, fatherliness, strength, support, that guiding, that guiding light that she may have felt lacking in her relationship with her father. And I, I think she misses her father as well. Um, and I think, you know, maybe one day that relationship can be repaired, but she did lose her father over this situation. So that is 
that is a loss that she's feeling. And in between Pioneer for Harry and Don Juan for Megan, I have Shapeshifter. So between the two of them, um, there's this skill that they have to see potential in things, to move through things, to not be stuck in one energy. They're going to be able to travel a lot. They're going to be able to move through different modes of being and adapt. Um, and this is a great skill in life because it means you're not set into one way of being. You can adapt to whatever your surroundings are. So I think the main takeaway for a lot of people who watch this documentary was obviously going to be... Um, the way that they kind of describe the media, um, I know that this is probably old news for a lot of people who might watch this channel or who probably don't watch um, the news or pay attention to that kind of thing. But, you know, for a vast majority of the population, okay, there's a very strong anchoring of our sense of safety and guidance and... Um, identity that is enmeshed with the current climate knowing what's going on and being part of something larger than yourself when we lack spirituality right so for a lot of people um it's not it's very terrifying and it's not even a question to um even fathom that the media may not be 100% genuine, honest and truthful with what they're presenting and how they're presenting things and what perspective they're presenting things from, okay? So maybe this will open people's eyes a little bit. Um, I mean, they've done it in a very simplistic way. Um, so yeah, hopefully this does um, make some sort of statement or change of some sort because... Um, the media are parasitic in nature, okay, as they kept saying in the documentary about people getting thrown to the wolves, they throw people to the wolves, there's lots of humiliation rituals, just like a fraternity, um, lots of bullying, you know, just like school, it taps into that childlike part of us, okay, that's all about pack mentality, um, and we have to grow out of this because this is how our um, ideas and thoughts are manipulated to serve a very small percentage of the population who run the media outlets, okay? Trust me, they've got their profit in mind, okay? They've got their ideals in mind. They are not for the everyday average person okay um and there's a, a kind of addiction to this what reminds me of like a school bully or like a fraternity pack mentality um mindset where if you're not one of us um you're an outcast and that you should be fearful of that when really it's not so scary having um a mindset where you are able to think critically okay critical thinking is very essential in this time that we live in where we're bombarded with media through our phones all the time um you know being able to be an independent thinker being able to question everything you come across okay that's really important and something that i learned from a very young age which has always stuck with me is um a lecturer at my university saying that um, every time she reads a paper, she doesn't think, what have I just learned? She thinks, how do I feel? Tune in and tap into your body and into your heart right now. And how do you feel after reading that? And once you start doing that, okay, you can really start to separate yourself from all the fear mongering and nonsense because you realize that the most important thing is your peace and this is like they are like the macrocosm of that which is going on within all of us where we're attached to our phones all the time okay um that's playing out through these two for all of us to learn something from because when we're addicted 
to um, this media directing us and telling us what to do and who to be takes away from our individuality, takes away from our sense of self, limits us into being consumers um, rather than um, being able to tap into ourselves, honour ourselves and put our peace as a priority and think, yeah, how, how do I feel about this? Rather than what do I know from reading this, okay? It's like, how do I actually feel within myself about this? Okay, not just jumping on some bandwagon to be part of a pack mentality. Okay, that's very, very primal and very primitive and very prohibiting. Okay, there's my little use of alliteration for the day. <laughs> it's very reminiscent of back in the medieval times when people used to go and watch public hangings and watch public beheadings and watch witch trials you know that kind of bloodthirsty lure to um watch someone else's public damnation and public downfall okay that's what the media are tapping into when they bully people on the public stage um and you, without thinking, you know, without any hesitation towards the possibility that this person might be multifaceted, um, might not be, um, you know, evil incarnate, <laughs> um, you just, you just lap it up, um, because that's tapping into, um, a shadow side of you that's expressing a part of your own insecurity when you partake in this. And the cherry on the cake of this reading is that I have the Empress. Um, and sometimes this does appear when women are in a fertile period, when they are pregnant, when they are wanting another child, or when they are just enjoying their femininity, their motherhood, and their womanhood. Um, so there is a possibility of, um, you know, more children, or at least them really relishing and enjoying the family life that they have with their children, or a pregnancy, don't want to say too much, don't want to say too much, but yeah, this is an energy of blooming, radiating, glowing in your femininity, okay, um, so, wow, I must have been talking really fast because I just took a really deep breath. Um, but yeah, I hope this reading was um, very coherent and helpful and interesting. Give me your um, suggestions for readings for celebrities, suggestions what you would like to see in a video. Make sure you're subscribed and click the notification bell and click all so you don't miss out on a video. I also do personal readings. My website is in the description box below if you would like your own personal reading. So thank you so much for being here. I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, see you guys soon.